Welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel, your wine educational channel to give you all you need for the wonderful world of wine. I am your host, Jimmy Smith. Thank you so much for stopping by. This little series is called Explaining Wine Terminology, and we give you a topic and we talk about it with great detail to give you the understanding so then you can go off and talk about it to your friends and gloat and brag and all those kind of things. Um, as always, if you have any comments, please pop them below in the comments section here. And also, whilst you're down there, make sure that you click the like button and subscribe for two weekly updates from the Wine with Jimmy channel. Um, otherwise, you can use the social meds at the bottom of every slide or direct to the website info at winewithjimmy.com. Let's begin with the world of screw caps. So not necessarily the most romantic side of the world of wine, but nonetheless important because screw caps, of course, are something that are becoming more and more prominent as a bottle closure in the world of wine. So I'm going to talk about what they are, um, actually uh, dispel some myths about them, and I'm going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages and where they are used in the world. You will find this useful for just everyday knowledge, but also those of you studying for wine examinations. Let's start at that place we call the beginning. So first of all, a definition. What are screw caps? So first of all, what we need to identify here, as it says, in the middle of the slide, they are an outside bottle closure. Most closures are inside bottle closures. The cork goes inside, the plastic cork goes inside, the glass cork goes inside. But this one is an outside bottle closure. OK, the screw cap then is an aluminium English pronunciation closure rolled on the outside of a bottle neck that has been specifically designed for this purpose. Uh, so it therefore requires the winery to have a different technology in place to actually install it because traditional bottling machines are all about popping the closure inside the bottle but this is an outside bottle closure system but that's just one part of this and it's the bit that everybody knows it's the bit that everybody sees when you're going through a supermarket or a wine shop you see that aluminium top part but as you see on the right of your slide there's the other bit the inner sanctum, the inner seal. And this is a mightily important. The seal with the wine is either a wad of something like tin, which is in fact impermeable to oxygen. It will not allow much or any oxygen ingress at all. Or saranex, which is a form of plastic with low permeability to oxygen, but will allow some. And that's actually better known in everyday life as cling film or used within cling film. OK, so it's a much more solid one, of course, in here as an inner seal, but it will allow some oxygen ingress. And that's the first thing we need to talk about here. OK, dispelling the myth, right? We always use these classic traditional corks which come from the cork tree because they are traditional, they pop wonderfully well when you take it out the bottle and they can allow oxygen. But screw caps can do the same as well. They can't pop, sadly. Maybe you just need to pop yourself in terms of make the noise, but they can allow oxygen. So let's talk through that. So the argument against screw caps has always been that only corks allow oxygen uh, in and they can breathe the wine and age the wine. But time, technology and science has dispelled that rationale. And indeed, some screw caps, as I will go through on the next slide, now mimic the cork and even to greater amounts than the cork. So let's have a look at a little table here. So for the technically minded, Jim Peck of G3 in California published following guideline figures, which I have on this table in his own research of MOCON, Mocon, 
OK, so let's have a look at the four given here. Now, your closure at the top of the list is a screw cap and also next down is a screw cap. But the liner is different. So tin and sarin, which is the more impermeable liner, and then the sarin X, which is a more impermeable liner. And you can see that the sarin X is 10 times more uh, impermeable to oxygen. It allows more oxygen ingress than the tin and saran liner. So you've got two major differing options of screw cap. Then you have in comparison, so you have this comparison, natural cork. And you'll see that that is about five times greater at oxygen ingress or what we call oxygen transmission rates than the tin saran liner, but actually about half of saran X. So natural cork sits in between those two typically, which is really interesting. So you can get screw caps which are more oxygen transmission and more some that are less uh, than natural corks. Now, please bear in mind this number here is a rounded figure for natural cork because there are many different qualities of natural cork and lengths of the cork in the bottle. So you can get some that are higher and lower in OTRs than others. So please just take that into consideration. And also just for another point of reference at the bottom of the table, you'll see synthetic corks. These are otherwise known as plastic corks, very much molded in one shape for most of them. And they very much allow oxygen transmission and are therefore better for very young, early consumed wines. So let's just mention another little bit here as well. So first of all, the top one, the tin and saran liner, which allows the least amount of OTR. This can be quite risky because, in fact, the wine doesn't really see much oxygen in its bottling or aging state. And this can actually increase the risk of reduction off flavors linked to sulfur and volatile sulfur compounds in the wine. I'll go through that later. Winemakers that do this may have to refer to copper uh, fining when they use that closure, which isn't ideal. Otherwise, uh, because it has an exceptionally well protected state, it's actually very good for shelf life and keeping wines fresh for a long, long period of time. The next one down, the Saranex liner, is great for wines that are going to be generally drunk, uh, sort of like, let's say, up to five years, because they do allow oxygen ingress more than a natural cork, for example. But they're not really suitable for long term storage. OK, so what about some advantages then of the world of screw caps? There's got to be advantages because we're getting more and more used globally. Uh, today in modern wine. So from a consumer's point of view, a screw cap can be opened without a special tool like a corkscrew. And screw caps, uh, and also they're quite easy to reseal as well. Um, they also eliminate the possibility of taint from corks, what we call cork taint or a corked wine. Now you can get cork taint from barrels, so that may be in the wine. So even in a screw cap wine, if it's gone through barrel maturation, could have cork taint, but it does eliminate cork taint from the cork, okay? So that is a major, major advantage because it is estimated that between three to 5% of cork, natural cork closures are affected by cork taint. And please look at my video on cork taint if you want more information around that. OK, so there's some advantages. Easy to open, easy to reseal and really the big one, eliminating cork taint from cork. Now, big markets that have adopted this. So globally, screw caps now account for nearly a third of all closures of wine. So that's really significant. Um, areas like Australia, about 80% of Australian wine is under screw cap. About 90 to 95% of New Zealand wine is under screw cap. Okay, so big, big markets there. So consumer attitudes towards the screw cap are very much different between differing countries. Uh, so you'll see that in some areas, 
um, these screw caps are quite widely accepted in markets like New Zealand, Australia and the UK for all but the finest wines. And there are um, some markets where the screw caps are only seen really as the inexpensive options in places like the US and China, although those markets are changing and becoming much more warmed to the idea of screw caps. So therefore, the winemaker needs to adapt to this. They must really take on board the intended market into account when making these decisions about closures. And for this reason, many of the larger wineries will in fact have differing closures for differing markets. Okay, now disadvantages of screw caps. So why isn't it being taken up more around the world? So first of all, then, I would mention that it is not traditional. That's the big fight that they have on their hands. It's not drawing a cork out of a bottle and making the old and famous pop noise, which we all want to hear when a cork is drawn. So that's one thing. But another big thing really is what I alluded to earlier, which is around reduction. So an issue with screw caps, especially, especially the near impermeable tin linings has been that wines can become reductive after bot bottling. So this is like an unpleasant onion-like smell on first opening. Otherwise, it's been described as like a garlic smell or even things like uh, sometimes like um, uh, quite sulfury notes, rubbery, um, struck match, these kind of notes. Um, research in Australia, of course, where screw caps are exceptionally important, has highlighted the issues surrounding bottles sealed under screw cap with the, um, the tin type liner. And they noticed that there was a rubber or struck flint note. It was actually an analysis carried, carried out on one Clare Valley Semillon over 14 different closures. And of course, the screw caps would have this um, type of uh, what we call reductive note on the wine. Uh, so really the inner liner, that inner sanctum is the big part to play within this. So also winemakers uh, to avoid this issue intend, uh, intending to use screw caps that do have this liner will um, reduce their sulfur dioxide levels at bottling. So this means there's less free sulfur dioxide which can create the volatile sulfur compounds of reduction. Uh, but for some wines, this isn't a choice because the wines have to go big transports to big markets around the world and they need protective sulfur dioxide. So they are looking at alternative options of closures in those instances. So really, that's the world of screw caps. Please don't just turn your nose up to it and go, oh, screw caps, Blah, you know, they're not corks. Give them a chance and give them a chance in terms of they are for all types of wines. It just depends, of course, on the market. So uh, that brings me to the end of this presentation. Now, if you haven't actually made your way across to my e-learning portal at Wine with Jimmy, make sure you do. Certainly for those of you that are studying the wonderful world of wine in things like your certified sommelier exams and WSET, you will find that the portal is very valuable for studies as it has many, many exclusive video content, short written answer questions, multiple choice, flashcards, revision sessions, map exercises, you name it, we are building a mammoth area to help you with your studies, to give you the confidence to get you through your examinations. So go across to www.winewithjimmy.com for much more information. Otherwise, once again, please do leave a comment, please like, and please subscribe. Uh, if you do find yourself in wonderful London town here in the United Kingdom, then come and see me. You know I've got schools and a bar, so come and see me for a class, a glass, or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. See you soon. Bye-bye.